I would also I would also like to recognize some of uh, some of our VIP members and members of the community and stuff. First of all, we have uh, Delegate Charles Poindexter, who represents represents the Ninth District. And we also have his legislative assistant and also the mayor of Chatham, Will Pace. We, uh, we have uh, Deborah Buchanan representing the Henry County Board of Supervisors. And we also have a former Henry County Administrator, John Richardson, with us today, and we're glad to have him here. <laughs> we have uh, Steve Veens, uh, who is the Lieutenant Colonel Steve Veens representing the Henry County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> and then with the City of Martins, we have the Mayor, Kathy Lawson. and former mayor and council member Danny Turner. We also have the former police chief Mike Rogers and Sandy Hines, the chief of investigative unit with the city. From the uh, uh, City Sheriff's Office, we have Steve Draper. And then also I want to recognize uh, Danny Turner who came out earlier uh, yesterday and the, the, the graves that we placed the wreath on last year he placed a floral arrangement on those this year, and that's to Sergeant McMillan here, uh, Sergeant Lovell, and then it was also one that we did for the People's Cemetery over on 2nd Street, uh, Sergeant Hearn. He was killed in Vietnam, and I appreciate Danny for taking care of that for us. Okay, now... We 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 have originally had in your your agenda will show Magna Vista JROTC and the Law Park Choir. Well, due to the the school requirements and stuff, they are not able to be with us. So the the presentation of colors will be done by our honor guard, and uh, then the national anthem will be done by the 29th uh, Infantry Band, and then. Um, um, we'll go from there. So, we got the colors. Okay, it's already done. Um, the national anthem. I would ask if you could stand and and cross your heart and uh, the national anthem. Present arms.
please remain standing if you will. We will now have the Pledge of Allegiance by Olivia Johnson and Madison Harrison. Olivia is a third grader at Carver. I'm sorry. And Madison is a third grader at Mount Olivet. And these are nieces of Daniel Spencer, who is one that we will be uh, honoring uh, later in the program. Thank you. You want to come up? To, somebody ought to help them up there. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll now have the placing of the POW MIA flag. We will now have the POW MIA tribute by, uh, sponsored by AMVETS and Barbara Johnson. They are commonly called POWs or MIAs. We call them brothers. They are unable to be with us this evening, and so we remember them. This table is set for one, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against his oppressors. Remember, the tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. Remember, the single red rose displayed in a vase reminds us of the families and loved ones of our comrades in arms who keep the faith awaiting their return. Remember, the yellow ribbon tied so prominently on the vase is reminiscent of the yellow ribbon worn <coughs> upon the lapel and breast of thousands who bear witness to their unyielding determination to demand a proper accounting of our missing. Remember, the candle, the candle is lit, symbolizing the upward reach of their unconscionable spirit. Remember. A slice of lemon is on the bread plate to remind us of their bitter fate. Remember, there is salt upon the bread plate, symbolic of the family's tears as they wait. Remember, 
The glass is inverted. They cannot toast with us this night. Remember, the chair, the chair is empty. They are not here. Remember, all of you who served with them and called them comrades, who depended upon their might and aid and realized upon them, for surely they have not forsaken you. Remember. Remember until the day they come home. Remember. Please be seated. We'll now have our invocation from um, Reverend Mark Hinchcliffe. Today we honor every branch of the military for the men and women who paid the ultimate price for the defense of this country and what it stands for today. Their uniforms were never retired in this life and now only exchanged for a new uniform of service with God. So we offer this prayer of memory but also of gratitude. Let us pray. Holy Lord, it is said that no greater love can be shown than one who has laid down their life for another. <coughs> so many have gone before us to do exactly that by defending others in the name of this mighty nation we call the United States of America. A defense that calls for an oath of loyalty to God and country. We ask for your blessing, O Lord, for the lives given for us as they sowed the seeds of peace that may forever keep America the land of the free and the brave. As each of us stand here together as survivors, friends and families of the fruits of their dedication. Lord, never let any of us forget these heroes of America freedom. Their sacrifice and yours, O oh God, shall never be forgotten. May it be every day, not just Memorial Day, that we remember everyone that has fallen on our behalf. Amen. In regards to the dedication of Memorial Day, we have, there are five uh, members of our community that we've lost, and, and as I call the names of their representative, they will each come up uh, one behind the other, and uh, and then I'll call the names of the of the lost, and and we have a presentation to honor them on this sacred day. First, we have Daniel Spencer, and he will be uh, represented by Thomas Spencer. Then we have Daryl Pay, and he will be represented by Dave Gilleran. We have Taylor Motley, and he will be represented by Paul Shively. 
William Wright, and he'll be represented by Bob Hazlett, and Phyllis Fleming, and she'll be represented by S.T. Deskins. Daniel Spencer, he was a 64 graduate of George Washington Carver High School. He got his basic training in Fort Gordon, Georgia. Then later he was transferred to Fort Jackson, South Carolina. After that, he went to Vietnam, spent two years with the MAC Corps headquarters of Saigon, Mekon Delta, where he spent two years. His awards was the Air Medal, the Army Commendation Medal, the Army Good Conduct Medal, Republic of Vietnam Medal, National Service Medal, Combat Infantry Medal, Marksman Badge. He was affiliated to the organizations, the Vice Commander of Homer Diller Post 78. He was a member of Ford Stewart, Veteran of Foreign Wars Post 4637. He was a member of the Martinville Henry County Veterans Honor Guard. He was also was appointed to the Martinville Transportation and Safety Commission by the Martinville City Council. He was a member of the Virginia High School League Association. I am here to present this plaque on behalf of the Veterans, or the veterans Organization, the VSO's Daniel Spencer family for his service for the, to the Veterans Organization for many, many years. <laughs> I'm David Gellerin. I'm here representing um, the Martinsville Henry County DSO in this award to um, memory of Daryl Pay. I don't know if any of Daryl's family is here today. Um, Daryl was a member of both the United States Navy and the United States Army. Um, he became eligible for the Veterans of Foreign War because of a, a mission that took place in Vietnam, and that's all I can say about it. <laughs> so you can read in between the lines. Um, Daryl uh, was a member of the local American Legion, Post 42, uh, VFW, Ford Stewart, Post 4637, Paul Shorter, Disabled American Veterans, um, Post 69. Um, Daryl faithfully served his country and his family and the veterans here in Martinsville and Henry County. And this particular plaque will be kept um, at the meeting place of the American Legion, DAB, and BFW in memory of Daryl Pay. Thank you. <laughs> Francis, are you here? Francis Wright? Anybody from the Wright family? I'm presenting to William Wright. He was born August 29, 1943, Fort Bragg. But that probably should uh, give you a combat infantryman's badge right there, being Fort Bragg. He served 23 years in the Army. He was a Vietnam veteran. He served in Europe and throughout the United States. He was a member of the, uh, Mount Zion Holiness Church. He was father of the church. Um, he was vice commander of the Disabled American Veterans, uh, Chapter 52. He did everything that we did in the DAV. If you know our organization, we don't have that many active members, but he did everything. And without him, we probably would not have be, been surviving at that time. He was a great guy. He is a great guy. And uh, I was um, honored for knowing, this, knowing William. He would do anything for anybody. He was a family man. He loved his wife. He loved his children. He loved his country. And I loved him too. And Mark Thomas will tell you, is his best friend too. And it was my honor to have known him. And I hope he's resting in peace right now. 
taking it easy. He had uh, a lot of diseases from Agent Orange and served in Vietnam. And it, it, his last few years were kind of rough on him, but I'm, I'm uh, stronger for having known him. He was a man of strong character and moral fiber. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, all. Today, it's a great privilege to me to present this small token of our appreciation to Doris Motley, the wife of Taylor Brown Motley, who not only was a fellow Marine, He's a neighbor, and he was one of my employees a long time ago. Taylor graduated from Fieldale College for High School in 1966 and proudly served in the United States Marine Corps in Vietnam, where he was a member of the unit that defended Khe Sanh. He was awarded the NDSM received the Vietnam Service Medal, the Vietnam Campaign Medal, with a device, presidential unit citation, meritorious maps, good conduct medal, and was advanced to the rank of sergeant. He was the past commandant of our Marine Corps League. He was a member of the American Legion, Martinsville Henry County Veterans Honor Guard. And he worked for Goodyear Tire in Danville for 36 years. He was a charter member of the Freedom Baptist Church and a deacon. He was also head of security. <coughs> Along with all those others, that I just mentioned, Taylor was an avid golfer. And this year, in remembrance of him, we have named, renamed our annual golf tournament to the Taylor Miley Memorial. We'll hold that on October the 9th uh, by Gordon Trent Golf Staying here today, pay homage to a friend of mine. Not only was she a sister, not only was she a veteran, but she was the commander of Coach 35 in the Rutgers College. She stood for a lot of things, but what she stood for the most. She was a teacher of Patrick Kennedy College. I think in some form, in some way, she probably touched each and every one of them, either through her grandchildren, her children, her children. Never, every one of them stopped and said she probably knew she was going to I was in hope someone would be here today to accept this award for Phyllis. She unfortunately died during the pandemic. I would have, would have the pleasure of seeing her and renewing her membership at the AMVETS two weeks before she passed. You never know, not for a second, when you're going to lose someone. 
All I can do is say, goodbye, my veteran. Goodbye, my friend. You will be missed. Thank you. I want to thank all of you for recognizing five great veterans, great members of our community, and uh, unfortunately they, they aren't with us, but they will always be with us here. Thank you all. Now I'd like to call on Leonard Boyce, the Deputy Commander of the Veterans Honor Guard, to introduce the members of the Veterans Honor Guard. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to have this opportunity to introduce to you all the Martinsville and Henry County Veterans Honor Guard. But just before I introduce them, I'd like to lay out a couple of stats. First of all, I'm not a public speaker. So if I do some stumbling and bumbling, just bear with me. We'll get there. But uh, the Marlboro Henry County Veterans Honor Guard was organized in 1973, and if my numbers are correct, at that time they had uh, 15 members. And when I look at these members of this Honor Guard, I can't say enough about them. You are talking about people, our comrades that's in their golden years, well into their golden years. And when you make a phone call, they are there. They won't take no for an answer in most cases. Sometimes, naturally, we have to. As you all, a lot of you probably know, last fall we sustained from doing funerals because of the COVID. Well, after the year came in, 21, we start hearing a little mumblings, when are we going to do some funerals? That's the type caliber of guys that we have in Honor Guard. So our commander, Thomas Spencer, called everyone together, I think it was in February, to get a consensus of the group. What did they do? Let's go to work. We've been out long enough. So at this time, I'd like for all members of the Honor Guard to stand. I would like for everyone to join in with me for the top-notch, number one Honor Guard unit in Virginia. The United, I mean the uh, Marshall Henry County Honor Guard. Everyone, crown and applause. Thank you. <laughs> Who said he couldn't speak? And I got to follow him. <laughs> now we've got uh, uh, Sonny Richardson, who is the commander of. Um, the uh, American Legion Post 78, and he will introduce the uh, VSO commanders and the auxiliary <coughs> presidents. Thank you, Dr. C. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to say thank you all for coming out today. I know you've been waiting for this particular day since we couldn't do anything last year, but thank God we are here today and I am very pleased to see each and every one of you. I'd like to introduce you to the Veteran Service Organization commanders. If you are present, just wave your hand or stand, whatever you like to do. Veterans of Foreign Wars, post 10840, Commander Ken Barron. American Legion, post 42, Commander David Kipfinger. Disabled American Veterans, Post 52, Mark Thomas. American Legion Homodilla Post 78, yours truly. Veterans Honor Guards, Commander Thomas Spencer. Marine Corps Lead, Post 908, Walter Shepard. American Veterans, Post 35, Shannon Campbell. And last but not least, Veterans of Foreign Wars, Post 46, 37, 
Commander David Gilligan. I would like to say also that these organizations in this community, we are striving for members. We know that there's some members out there. We know you want to join. It's not, it's not a problem to join. As you can see, we are losing our veterans every year. Mm -hmm. We have no replacements. But the replacement, replacements are out there. You just got to get that initiative to come up and say, I want to join. And it will be no problem. So ladies and gentlemen, please give a hand for these com commanders for the outstanding work keeping all these veterans together. Thank you. We will now have the, uh, uh, the 29th Infantry Division Band will now play the military service songs for each. And remember, we're starting with the youngest and going to the oldest. So the, initially it will be the Coast Guard. Just if you would stand when your respective service song is played. Thank you. <laughs>
That was pretty good. That one year, one year layoff we had, everybody got it exactly right, and they, they stood up for the right service. Uh, sometimes they can get confusing. <laughs> Now I'd like to call on SD, uh, ST Deskins to uh, introduce our speaker for today. so much to the brave men and women who have served to protect us in our way of life. May we never forget their sacrifices or take for granted our freedoms for which they paid such a heavy price. May we honor them not just once a year, but every day of our lives by living with an attitude of gratitude and an appreciation for how blessed we are to live in this country. God bless your friends and family who have fallen, and please comfort them all of those days. That being said, I've read Sergeant of your Burrow's uh, resume. It's longer than my legs, it's not very long, but it's still long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go right to the chase <laughs> and, and, and just tell you, you know, he, he attended a leadership development course. You know, back for basic non-commissioned officer, advanced non-commissioned officer, of course, distinguished up with honor, honor graduate, the first sergeant, of course, and was selected for the U.S. Army Sergeant Major, Major class of 61. He currently has completed a master's in business administration with human resources, concentration from Excelsior College in New York. Sergeant Ibero's awards decorations include the Bronze Star, not once, Twice. A Taurus Service Medal, Army Commendation Medal, Army Achievement Medal, Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal, Afghanistan Campaign Medal, two times, Iraq, Iraq Campaign Medal, Kosovo Campaign Medal, Korean Defense Service Medal, NATO Service, two times, Medal. Global War on Terrorism, Terrorism Service Medal, Good Army Good Conduct Medal, which I don't know how it happened, <laughs> six times awarded, <laughs> National Defense Service Medal, the Master's Aviation Badge, the Driver's Badge for Warfare Device, and is a member of the Order of St. Michael's Bronze. He is married to Rita Ibarra of Bassett and has four children, Rihanna, 19, Adrian 15, Ariana 8, and Guy L1. This being said, like I said, Sergeant Major Ebar is a member of Post 35. And he has done his job so well. He has carried on as a veteran. Even though he's had 20 plus years in the military, he continues to give his service here at a local level at the Ambitch. And I can't say any more other than that. He's a great friend of mine. And I do think once you listen to Mr. Ybarra, Yo or First Sergeant Ybarra, I should say, you'll understand why he's such a great guy. That being said, I proudly introduce you to Anthony Ybarra. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Esty, and thank you for everybody in, its, in attendance today. It is a lovely day. An honored guest. Thank you for showing us well. I uh, thank you for the honor to speak today, and I thank those taking your time out to remember and honor our fallen heroes. I'm not sure you're aware that today is unofficially the 155th Memorial Day Remembrance Ceremony for the United States. <coughs> Memorial Day can be traced back to May of 1866, but it wasn't official until 1968. Memorial Day was once called Decoration Day. 
due to the custom of placing flowers on the graves of fallen soldiers and sailors. In Water and Waterloo, New York had been officially recognized as the birthplace of Memorial Day by Congress. It was chosen because it hosted annually a community-wide event during which businesses closed and residents decorated the graves of soldiers with flowers and flags. On May 5, 1868, General John A. Logan, then President of the Grand Army of the Republic, a veterans organization, called for a nationwide honoring on the 30th of May. He stated, this particular day be designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country and whose bodies lie in almost every city, village, churchyard in the land. Remarkably, 25 days later in Arlington National Cemetery, General James Garfield made a remembrance speech to 5,000 participants, mind you, 25 days, 5,000 participants who decorated 20,000 graves of Civil War soldiers. As other major conflicts arose, Memorial Day, which originally honored those lost at the Civil War, had evolved to commemorate all American military personnel who died in wars, including World War I, World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam, and the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. In 1968, Congress passed legislation to officially declare Memorial Day as a federal holiday. In preparation for my remarks, I considered all my years in the military service. And my time overseas, I came to the realization that there have been a number of soldiers. No. Friends, I lost in battle. I still remember their faces. Today is the day for their honor and remembrance. As a combat leader, your ethos becomes mission, men, then me. As heartbreaking it is to lose a soldier, the mission must continue on. And as a senior leader, my job became tougher as I had to change the morale of the unit after a loss. It is only now that my numbness subsides and their remembrance is more important than ever. Sergeant Toulouse, Chief Warrant Officer 3, Hartwick, Chief Warrant Officer 2, Thibodeau, Captain Mosier, CW2, Yoder, CW3, Ruffner, Sergeant Ray, Sergeant First Class Reynolds, Sergeant White, Sergeant Mitchell, and Specialist Mayor. These men and women gave the ultimate sacrifice to our country, family, and fellow citizens. You see, military personnel are cut from a different cloth. Regardless whether an officer or enlisted, every military member takes an oath to defend the Constitution and, if so, give their life in their defense. Today we honor those who did not come home. I need to stress a point for those unfamiliar with military operations. And I'm going to briefly describe the process of an overseas deployment. Before every deployment, each unit will have a departure ceremony for their families to gather and spend time with each other before uh, they get on the bus to the airport. Mind you, in the Army, there's always been many times, hurry up and wait is the official plan. But for these days, it felt more like time sped up. Usually, this event takes place in a gym or other large building where soldiers fully kitted with their weapon are spending time with their families. The youngest of the children are playing and running around with the others as they're too young to fully understand what's going on. As you look around, teenagers are surprisingly physically close to their parents and no phones in their hand. Then you hear 
over all these voices. Roll call formation in 10 minutes. Immediately, all noise subsides. The young children are rounded up. Then you see each family unit gathered together closer. Tears are either held back or allowed to fall. The hugs get tighter. Then out of the blue, fall in. At this point, the soldier turns to every family member present, holds them tightly, and gives them a kiss. They squeeze every child. Some rub and kiss their unborn children. They hug their brother, sister, mom, dad, and finally their spouse. They stare lovingly in each other's eyes. And then the soldier walks away from everything that they love in this world to fulfill their obligation to the nation, their family, and those they will never know. This will be the last time families hugged, kissed, and looked upon the face of their soldier, sailor, airman, or marine. And it is for those who we honor today who never came home. This is the heart and soul of Memorial Day. I went through this process seven times in my career. It did not get easier each time. I can tell you personally that when you get on the bus, you look at your family long and hard and wonder, is this the last time I'm going to see them? Will I come home? Is third time the charm? But as soon as we are out of view, the mission is on. The switch has been turned. Those feelings are swallowed and put on the shelf. Again, veterans are cut from a different cloth. I can tell you there's a debate within veteran ranks about Memorial Day. There are some who feel who it's the saddest day of the year and want to be alone. And then there are some who feel we remember those by enjoying the day with friends and family. I'm here to say both are right. It's important to recognize those who did not come home and that they fought and died for the right for everyone to have freedom of choice. Respect each other's remembrance and together let's kindly teach civilians there is no happy Memorial Day. Many do not hold the same value of this day as we veterans and family members who have lost friends and loved ones, but they still do respect the holiday and do not have any ill intentions. Another tradition which may not be known is by placing co uh, coins on headstones. The different coins have certain meanings. A penny means you stop by and paid your respects. A nickel, you attended boot camp with them. A dime, you served in the armed forces with them. And a quarter. A quarter means you were, where, you were with them when they were killed. So please, if you see any coins, please do not remove them. But do know the meaning. Today, Memorial Day honors our military members who fell in combat. But at least we forget those combat veterans who are still at war in their minds. Earlier, I read the names of my fallen soldiers and friends. 
However, some of those names died here on the home front by their own hands. It breaks my heart when I read on social media that one of my buddies or an old soldier of mine took their own life. When we all left service, everyone spread across the nation. Many veterans went back where life took them or went where life took them and ended up in small rural areas such as here. Others are in the hustle and bustle of big city life. However, these soldiers are still at war alone in the, with their demons from overseas. Many of you know what that is. So I say to the veterans here today, I implore you to seek and find this new generation of combat veterans and take them under your wing. Teach them how to fight this battle and end their war as some of you have done or continue to fight today. Do not let this list of fallen grow unnecessarily. And let us together finally bring them home. And let us all here today remember, let us remember the great sacrifice that America's sons, daughters, and families have paid for the freedoms we enjoy today. Thank you, and I thank you all for coming here today and honoring our fallen heroes. First Sergeant Yubera, could you come back up here just a second? I, I really appreciated your presentation, and you really put it in perspective. Uh, probably a better perspective than what we represent or what we are represented to outside. I'd like to present to you on behalf of the uh, Veteran Service Organization a pen and pencil set with your name on it. Thank you very much. Thank you. memorial prayer from Dr. Uh, G. H. Vaughn. Would you pray with me? Holy Father, on this solemn day, we give you thanks. For we have been so blessed by those who have given themselves for us. We thank you this day for their gift and for the gifts that we continue to receive from them. As we pause in these moments to reflect, may we too know that your presence and that your love blesses our days. We thank you for each one of these, and we pray your blessings this day upon their families. That those who were gathered today and will have one missing from their midst might be comforted by you as only you can. We pray your blessings this day upon each of these who are veterans among us. May we honor them. We thank you for their presence. And we seek to learn from them today the lessons they have to teach us. And so we thank you that you have blessed this moment and this day with your presence. In the name of your Son, Jesus, amen. amen. We'll now have the uh, retrieval of the POW MIA flag.
آره آن We will now have the laying of the wreath for the POWMIA. Please stand if you would. If you would continue to stand, we'll now have our benediction from Reverend Larry Stanfield. Our Heavenly Father, today is a remembrance of our fallen comrades who have sacrificed their lives for our nation. May they rest in peace. Also, like to pause a moment and honor our fallen comrades, veterans who have, are experiencing difficulties. May God bless them and strengthen them and encourage them. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. I like to, this completes our service. I really like to thank everyone. We'll have the honor guard with the three volleys and the salute and taps. Present arms. This completes our program. We do have refreshments uh, provided by the Wright Funeral Service.